Welcome back to Switched to Linux. I decided to do another outdoor one from the uh, wonderful uh, RV snowbird destination of Quartzsite. And uh, curiously, this is technically city limits, although they have a 10 mile radius and five BLM grounds inside of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, the slow process of switching to Linux full time because I think one of the challenges, particularly in our modern Instapot culture, is we realize that a lot of our decisions and movements need to be done with crockpot speed. And uh, as what I mean by this is our current culture is very much, um, we want to see things instantly, we want to see instant gratification. This has been bred into us over the last generation as we go in and just get a glass and can get as many refills of whatever soda or variation of sodas we want. It's the high proliferation of fast food. It's all sorts of, um, just all sorts of things that drive us into this instant gratification inside of our life. And so when it comes to our operating systems and we want to switch, maybe we have a bad experience on Windows or you know, uh, something goes on that we're like, oh man, this kind of leaves a bad feeling in my mouth and uh, I should really maybe switch to Linux or whatever else. And then we just one day immediately jump over. And the problem with that is it doesn't run perfectly smooth because they're completely different operating systems. Okay, these are two operating systems that operate completely differently. I mean, the folder structures are different. You know, one has backslashes, one has forward slashes. Things are not exactly compatible one system to the other as we go along. And so what happens is your average person that might want to switch to Linux might install Linux over it, get frustrated, and then say, oh, that's just garbage and let's just move back. Well, the problem with that is that you haven't given it a chance, you haven't given it the time to learn. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's like GIMP versus Photoshop. They are both good and powerful programs, but they behave in different ways. A person who's used GIMP their whole life, switching to Photoshop, thinks of Photoshop the same thing somebody uses Photoshop their whole life switches to GIMP. All right, and the thing is, is they just, operate differently despite being able to do effectively the same thing and so what happens is we want to jump too quickly and so because we want to jump too quickly we fall out of the principle of taking our time slowly learning things this is why in my process i first tell you keep using that main operating system but switch everything to the open source applications and use those as much as possible but there's going to come a time you can't. If you need to learn how to use GIMP, don't just delete Photoshop. Install GIMP alongside Windows and slowly figure out how to use it. All right, and then um, as you're going along, you'll get to the point where you'll realize, oh, I actually have the ability to switch and move my workflows. Obviously, there's a few exceptions. You know, if you have some job that absolutely 100% without a exception requires you to use this or that application, you're gonna be stuck with that, at least as far as work is concerned. But if we're talking about going home and all of your private things, all that stuff should be done on Linux anyway, because it's way more private. It doesn't give every bit of data up to some master operating system. And those are the things that you wanna do. So as I slowly switched to Linux, you know, the first few years that I ran this channel, my web design work kept on running on that Windows 7. And then I would use my laptop on Linux for as many things as I could, slowly move my workflow over so that now I'm running 100% on Linux. Well, the last holdout that I had was my accounting for my primary business. Now my content creation business I created that and set that up on GNU Cache a long time ago so I can learn all the ins and outs of running GNU Cache over the course of a few years. But then what happened is I 
kept on doing my accounting for my primary business over on QuickBooks as I had done. Now, I had not used the cloud-based version of QuickBooks. I saw, I think, a 2011 QuickBooks copy. And so I ran that for my accounting. And then at the beginning of 2022, I created a GNU cash file for that business. And then for a whole year, I did all of my accounting twice. Once in QuickBooks and once in GNU cash. All right. And so as I did that, what happened is I learned how to do everything I needed to do in the old accounting system, in the new accounting system. And this allowed me to start the beginning of 2023 without using QuickBooks. So that last application that I still was using Windows on in 2023 is now finally wiped out. Slow crockpot process. That is what you should do when you are switching to Linux. You should slowly move over to the free and open source software. You should slowly move over to uh, experimenting with the operating system on a USB drive, a live key, or something to that effect, so that you're not getting a full culture shock as you jump on into the Linux operating system. And so what we're seeing is oftentimes people want to jump in too fast. This causes frustration and then you just abandon the system. Well, that's the problematic part. What instead you should do is you should start in very slowly, individual applications, work the workflow that you need to work, and then figure out how to slowly roll those things over, consult the forums, or the channels like ours for the various things that you need to figure out. And then once all that is going on, guys, once all that's going on, then you can sit back and you can slowly move all of your life, your personal files on over to Linux, and you can go ahead and make that move as swiftly as conceivably possible. That is the effective way that you can switch to Linux. So hopefully that helps you as you decide. And, and let's go ahead and talk real quick about what are good ways that you can experiment with Linux. Well, start with something you can run easily on a USB drive just to experiment with. Uh, maybe get a live key. And of course I have videos about how to do this. I'll go ahead and link some of those down below. Download like Linux Mint XFCE, Linux Mint Cinnamon, one of those, burn it onto a USB drive, boot that into your computer, and don't install it. Just poke around, play around with it. Explore the internet with Firefox that's built in. Play around with LibreOffice that's pre-installed. Look at the operator, or the various software it has. Now realize everything you do on that little key is not going to save. That's okay. All you're doing right now is getting your feet wet, figuring out how to use that. But with all that being said, guys, that is how you can best start the slow process by which you want to switch to Linux. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy, of course, switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.